Hi, this is Dina Tollefson, and welcome to my studio. I'm so glad to have you here today. So today's painting, I'm hoping that you'll be able to just relax and watch, and if you're having any insomnia or any kind of problems with sleeping or overactive mind, I hope that this video will help and be beneficial to you. And I'll be talking today about this painting called Bathsheba Sky. So this is a painting that I created. Uh, first started with bristle brushes and uh, just acrylic on canvas. And the size of the canvas is 24 by 30 inches and an inch and a half deep. So I'm painting with a spoon here, and I'm adding this texture that you see with the spoon. We'll get a mark right there we go. So this technique is called Daubism for these thick, really super thick marks of paint. And the um, then I also use palette knives. You can see this kind of wonderful turquoise color. This actually is called teal. This is a golden acrylic. And I'm putting it on just these little marks with a palette knife, this long, thin palette knife. There we go. So now stepping over to the canvas, I'm using a mixture of titanium white and French ultramarine blue, just a little touch of it to indicate the water, the reflections of the water. So this painting is really focusing on the color blue, all the different shades of blue that are possible, everything from teal and turquoise up through a purpley blue and a deep dark blue and all the different variations so I'm going to be mixing up lots of different colors today to represent all the shades of blue The name of the painting is called Bathsheba Sky, and it was named after Bathsheba from the Old Testament in the Bible. And all of my Sky series paintings I've named after characters of the Bible. And the reason I named them after characters of the Bible is because um, the Sky series paintings are my idea of how God created the earth. And so with one mighty breath, he just willed the earth and our entire universe into, into existence. He took all this energy and every day he makes for us a new sunrise and he makes us a new sunset. So back with my spoon. I like the marks that I can get with a spoon. I'm using a kind of a cupped form, like a little canoe kind of a shape. I really like if I can get this cupped form. And I like to intermix the cupped forms and the flat forms. I love to just kind of roll around in the paint there. It has just such a great feel. We'll get a mark right here on the end. There we go. Now I'm going to search and see where else I could use some more of these marks. The spoon leaves a shape that is difficult to get with palette knives, so even though it's a little trickier to use, I do like to use the spoon whenever possible. So 
so Bathsheba, um, this is a true story, Bathsheba is the, um, was the wife of Uriah, and he was a Hittite, and she was known for her beauty, and she was just a beautiful woman, and King David um, actually lusted after her. That's almost like a modern-day soap opera. He actually saw her bathing, which is really scandalous, and he um, called for her and seduced her and ended up, they ended up having an affair. It's really rather shocking. And what happened was um, David knew that she was married and he wanted to get rid of Uriah, her, her husband. And so he had him killed. I mean, it's just, it's terrible. He had him killed. And then after all of that, he ended up marrying Bathsheba and and it actually has a nice ending is that uh, Bathsheba um, got pregnant and then gave birth to a son and the son uh, they named Solomon and um, most people who are not not that familiar with the Bible or marginally familiar with the Bible will recognize the name Solomon and it's a name that a lot of people love to give their children even today. But uh, King Solomon, so he, uh, Solomon grew up and he became King Solomon. And Solomon was known for being a very wise person. So he had a beautiful mother who was doing what, uh, doing, I guess, what she had, had not of. <laughs> she was, she cheated on her, on her husband, which is a terrible thing. But um, in the end, uh, good came out of it at the very end. Um, in that they had given birth to uh, King Solomon, who was a very wise and wonderful um, ruler. So now I've switched over to my larger. I have two sizes of spoons I use. This size spoon is a actually like a vegetable spoon vegetable server and uh, the reason I use two different sizes of spoons is I can get uh, much larger marks with this big one but I have to be careful because this big one does make really large marks and can only use it on you know my really larger paintings and this uh, color that you see here is French ultramarine blue with just a little touch of white get a few small marks so I've switched over to my little uh, super thin palette knife and just kind of filling in and adding a variety I'm aiming for a variety of different of sizes of marks and I'm using these different palette knives and spoons of different sizes to really get a, a wide variety what I want is when you get up to the canvas and you look at the painting that up close it's going to look super interesting and then there we go and then far away it'll look like something representational so this blue that you see here is a combination of phthalo blue red shade and some titanium white and a very tiny, small amount of yellow ochre. I want my focal point on this painting to be the sun, and I'm working to make the painting as um, beautiful as I can using shades of blue because I'm thinking about Bathsheba and the idea that uh, of the bathing and then the idea of of her beauty and using the blues I'm looking through the canvas and seeing where we could use a mark. 
There's a good spot there. There we go. That's nice. Alright, so I can now, now that I've got my larger marks in, I can fill in again with this smaller tool. And the landscape itself, I'm thinking about, um, I live in Iowa, and I'm thinking about a typical Iowa landscape with trees and water and a lot of plants. In Iowa, we have a very, very fertile land, very fertile soil, and everything grows very quickly in the summer. They say you can hear the corn growing when it's really hot and humid. But we grow a lot of corn and soybeans here in Iowa. Get a mark there. There we go. And this body of water that, um, that I've drawn here in Bathsheba Sky would be appropriate for the Blanding's turtle. So Blanding's turtle likes to have some hills and an area surrounded by trees in the water. And they like to have it deep, but not too deep. So the Blanding's turtle's kind of picky, but I like to think that maybe a Blanding's turtle's living out there. I'm also putting these marks and I can, uh, because I'm applying the texture, I can um, create a sense of motion by arranging the daubs of paint in a shape that will follow the curves and the motion of the sky. I can also arrange the daubs to create a sense of calm, like in the water. They're all, I'm making all of the marks horizontal and up in the sky. I'm having them follow the idea of the breath. So now backing out, we can see the whole painting. And I've added, uh, you can see I've added some um, area of yellow ochre up in the sky. Let's get a little bit of a mix going here. I'm now mixing up some neutrals because it's important to have a lot of grays and different neutrals in any painting and having those neutral colors will help to uh, balance the painting and it makes all the bright colors really stand out beautifully. Add some white here, some titanium white. So really, what I did here is I've got I've got uh, Mars black in here, titanium white, a little bit of cobalt blue, some of that teal and turquoise, yellow ochre. Just trying to go for a kind of a bluey green kind of a color. Now let's add some more of the French Ultramarine. Make up some more neutrals. And this little bit of orange here in the center is kind of the little punctuation for the color scheme. This is mostly a cool color scheme, meaning that on the color wheel it's tending towards blues and greens, and then all of the neutrals and grays that go with that, and just a little punctuation of the warm colors, which would be like the yellows and the reds. The 
And for those of you who've been asking, I'll give you a little update too on, on our pond and how things are going. So Featherston Turkey has been, uh, those of you who've been following with Featherston, he's doing just fine, but he did have a little altercation with some of the Canada geese the other day. So we had a big cold snap and a lot of snow and some uh, Canada geese, well, I think it was like 13 of them, something like that, had flown in and were up on the hill and they had come off, off, off of the pond. So our pond is frozen, but there's one little area that came up near the uh, Cedar River. There's one area of the pond that is aerated, so it's an open area. And the geese had come up onto our hill and it, uh, were eating some of the food that my husband puts out for the birds. So they had cracked corn and they had uh, peanuts in the shell and uh, cracked peanuts and all the other bird food that uh, my husband puts out. Well, anyway, these Canada geese were, um, had kind of dominated the area and so the turkeys were coming up and Featherston was one of them and they were coming up and wanted to eat some of the food uh, that my husband had put out for all the wild birds. And the Canada geese were um, intimidating Featherston and the other turkeys, so they would walk up and then they would turn right around and walk away, those poor things. But um, the great news is that um, over a period of several days, all of the birds decided, or they were all deciding in harmony, somehow they worked it out, and they're all now uh, there. So the Canada geese have um, stayed on, about nine of them have stayed on. And the uh, and they're kind of loud and raucous and they like they kind of nip at each other if the other one gets in the way. But the turkeys are now also just walking around and milling about in there with, with those Canada geese. We also had a, uh, which was kind of neat, is we had a an immature bald eagle and a mature bald eagle um, over by the hole in the pond where it's frozen and they were looking for fish but um, the immature bald eagle as you can tell like a mature bald eagle has got a white head and the immature bald eagles are um, kind of like kind of a jaw like a dark brown all over and they look kind of like a hawk they're slightly smaller than the adults and this time of year so it's uh, February right now and late February and the uh, immature um, bald eagles were there it's their first year so they were born in in uh, it within this past year and the, it will take a while before they'll get their fully white head and the males and the females um, if you look at them from several feet away they look pretty pretty much the same but the immature bald eagle actually has quite a bit different look and it takes a while for them to uh, to really grow and mature but what I found was interesting was that the it has to have been the parent bald eagle was flying around with the immature and they did have some fish at the side of the uh, frozen pond area where the hole is, aeration hole. And so they were in there and the parent was watching while the immature bald eagle was eating, which was uh, really quite neat to see. So I'm putting these last touches of French ultramarine blue mixed with a little bit of white on with my narrow palette knife. You can see I can make tiny little marks or large marks with that same knife. The final touches. I want to thank you so much for stopping by, visiting me today in the studio. If this is your first time here, I want to thank you and I hope you'll subscribe and give me a like. And if you've been here before, I want to thank you for coming again and I hope to see you again soon. This is Dina Tollefson. Bye-bye.